Good afternoon, my good people. This is the Real Life Real Estate Investing Show where we talk about real life real estate situations, but we bring you real life real estate solutions. I'm your host, Glenn Glass, but affectionately known as Mr. Dollar Out of a Dime. And I have the guest of the year. The guest of the year. I got my man, Mr. Robert Yancey, in the house. Um, you know, we were just talking. I said, listen, you ain't been on this show all year, man. You know, and I, I had to say, this is going to be like the last show of 2020. So we definitely say the best for last. Um, so, so definitely, you know, I'm going to bring, bring my man on up. The man who needs very little introduction. Uh, I'm going to do what I do the best that I can to introduce him. Uh, listen, this is, this is uh, one of the gentlemen that I have a ton of respect for that's making moves in so many directions. Brother, you, you, you make a move north, south, east, and west uh, <laughs> as it relates to business, you know, doing major things in the industry of real estate, major things in other industries as well. And uh, listen, I salute you. I appreciate you. Listen, I appreciate you, man, for, for um, being a leader, being a leader and, and doing the things that you do, man, and, and showing us all that it's possible to not just be what they consider a one trick pony. <laughs> right, right. I, <laughs> no. I, I appreciate that, man. I'm happy. I'm definitely, happy. definitely. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. Tell <laughs> us a little bit about yourself, man. Um, you know, for the one or two people that might watch this that don't who you don't know who you are. Oh man, I don't think it's about time for all that. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> um, but for those who don't know me, you know, my name is uh, Robert Yancey. Um, I adopted the nickname of uh, Mr. Invest back in uh, 2000. Ooh. Like 2010, 2011, and um, I just uh, a long time ago, I just really came up with the concept that uh, of understanding that investing can change your life. And I say I normally just leave it as invest, I N V E S T, because if there's anything in your life that you want to change, you have to invest, right? So you have to invest time into you know changing or learning something new. When it comes to you know doing anything that you're doing, it it requires an investment. It requires you to take the step to actually invest, right? So once I understood that years ago, my you know the past ten years has been nothing but that. I've done used that concept, investing into business, investing into people, investing into my health, investing into you know spirituality. You know, it's just everything revolves around that. So that's pretty much what the platform of the of my life goes to, right? Everything requires a significant and focused investment. So uh, through that, I've done a lot of different businesses, um, more so trying to find what I really like and what you really connect with, because there's a point where you can, you can do businesses and everything I've done has worked and has made money. There's just things that I haven't liked, right? You just, after a certain while, you're just like, I'm not really excited about waking up and doing this. You know, the auto business is one thing, you know, no, no shade to anybody that does it. It's just, I just think it's a nickel and dime business. Do people make a lot of money? Yeah, but it's, I just didn't like it, right? Mm -hmm. So from car business to other industries. So I narrowed down my focus to what I really, really know and love and could wake up every day. And truth be told, it's something that I could talk about and do for free. I did I do for free and I do it a lot of the time. You know, a lot of my, you know, consulting sessions and stuff are just derived from somebody needing help. And I'll talk to you about money investing and the hospitality industry all day long because it's just what I love to do. And uh, so pretty much that's it, you know, six, seven days a week. It's the exact same thing every single day. Real estate, hospitality, real estate, hospitality, real estate, hospitality, and also looking towards, you know, the next phase and what, what's going to come of that. So that, that's pretty, that's me in a nutshell. There's, <laughs> there's not much filter, not super educated. Everything I learned was uh, through trial and error, you know, trial and error with my own money. And uh, that's the best education you could ever get. And uh, <laughs> this is the best education you could ever get. And, um, you know, through that, I've, I've, enco I've encountered and partnered with a lot of different people that I've learned from. You know, a lot of those relationships didn't continue. But, you know, just like in, you know, the word will tell you, some people are there for a reason in the season. I learned what I needed to learn. And, you know, I just discontinued to keep going. And, uh, you know, this is, you know, this is what, two, three years of, you know, doing the show. And I think every time I come on, you know, people can see the growth. And I think that's important in business is that like every every quarter, every month, every year, you have to continue, you have to be growing. So we, if you talk last year to somebody and they're doing the same thing this year, but there's no growth behind it, that just basically becomes that. It's like, it's like having a job. You're making money, but it's just like, there's no, like, why would you take this opportunity of freedom and not explode? 
like not like you finally at the point like with my assistant i actually was gonna have her on the show but she's uh on the she's uh running around doing some other stuff that she we had a conversation about you know what how, how i'm able to get up so early in the morning and i tell her i, I said i didn't used to be that way i said but i finally found something that doesn't allow me to sleep mm. you know what i mean like i, I like when we, weekends and holidays now they drive me insane because i'm just like dude i'm trying to get stuff done like, <laughs> make this happen. like you know forget all this holiday stuff like we got to get it popping Right, and, right. So, but, but but what when you when you realize that purpose and what you're what you're fighting towards, you don't want no days off. You're like, yo, we gotta make it happen every day. Right, right, right. So, right. so that's it. That's, that's, that's me in a nutshell. But listen, you, you you broke it down so real though, man. And that's a, I think a lot of times people miss what what that is all about. You know, when you're talking about something that makes you happy, something that you get up for, something that makes you want to get up. You know, uh, there's not very many people I know that can say, I mean, well, not not very many people that can say that they have something going on in their life that makes them want to get up, Mm -hmm. you know. um, I'm excited. I'm excited every day, man, because most of my days are helping other people, you know what I mean? So that's what excites me is being able to see other people grow and do the things that they do, you know, and I know you do quite a bit of that as well. Um, So tell me, man, listen, you know, there's so much that we got to cover, man, but, you know, I'm trying not to rush Hey, you right. got all you got you got me for all afternoon, man. So take you're fine. Take your time. We got so much to cover, man. But tell me, how did you get your start in business? Like, you know, we've of course we've had this conversation a million times, but you know, for the people for the people that may to to help them understand what somebody like you who who to where you are now, and we'll get to that. How did you get started? What inspired you or who inspired you to you get know, started? The, the first person you know, it goes back to it goes back to my grandfather and my dad, and then the first gentleman that intro- actually introduced me to business and just in general, which was real estate. So my grandfather, you know, Jack Ford, <clears throat> he was always teaching me about responsibility and saving, and, and you know, the the, the the manhood things, and about. Mm-hmm. So at a young age, my dad used to always you know send me to him for the weekend, and uh, I would just spend time with him. And he he was a Vietnam vet, and like he, we just spend a lot of time talking. So he's like sixty five or something like that i'm in elementary and middle school and right. i'm i'm getting wisdom from this man who's experienced a lot through life you know so between that and my uncle so you know through that i was just like hey man I, you know i know i want to do something <clears throat> and then my dad came in and you know by the age we were all we were both from michigan so we we hustled through seasons so right. as kids <laughs> you know we, we we shovel snow we rake leaves summertime we take out trash and, and, we, and we recycle cans <laughs> That that was our hustle. So that was the beginning of my work ethic. And then, you know, I got my first job working with my dad in Detroit and I was 14 and I was working side by side with him. You know what I mean? And uh, he just he just little by little, he just started teaching me things. So when I actually was able to start working on my own, which, which was the hospitality industry, I always had that fire. So that's why I always moved up so quickly with the companies that I worked for, because I was I always, I wanted to I wanted to be able to do everything. So just like not being a one trick pony. So if I'm in the hospitality industry, not just being able to serve, not just being able to bartend, but being able to cook. If it goes, if, if the kitchen goes down, I, somebody should be able to jump back there and help them out to get them out of the weeds, which I had to do many of times over the years. And, uh, you know, so just that. <laughs> but then I think right around 20 to 21 was when I realized, I was like, man, and for everybody that's watching, 21 for me is totally different from 21 today. 21 today, is almost like 35 to 39 because of the advancements you guys had during in technology mind you when i was 21 aol messenger was like the thing like, you can, <laughs> remember that so and so we we we, we was you know, wi- wi-fi cards would come out on that big thing that you had to stick in the side of the computer to be able to get wi-fi <laughs> so we we were just kind of coming into like that technology age so the information for us was still kind of in books or um you know, we had to kind of search for it. So, you know, real estate that in the real estate market was booming around that time, but it what we didn't have the information or wasn't as available. So the gentleman by the name of Vernon Monfort, which is actually, you know, still in my life and we're actually planning on my next location that I'm gonna do, I'm doing it with him because he's the man that introduced me to real estate. Why while we were running around opening up uh, restaurants. You know, month after month, day after day, he just leaned over to me one day. He's like, Rob, he's like, you ever thought about uh, flipping houses? 
I was 21. And I said, nope. I, I had no, I had never thought about it. And he was already do he was already doing it, you know, wasn't doing it the right way, but he was doing it. And right. he right. brought me, he uh he got me set up with a lender. And you know, within you know a couple of months, I had bought four properties like out of nowhere. Like I had no idea what I was doing. Right. And and you know, so that that was my introduction in the business. But what fired me up about it, mind you, everybody knows that story. Well, it'll be more in depth, like you know, when when, uh, when my book is done <clears throat> and written. But I went through it. I can't. I was in. I came into the market six months before it fell off the cliff. So people talk about it. I was there. Right. Right. Yeah. I saw an appraisal come in at you know two fifty on Friday, and then on Monday the bank called you back, and the value got cut down to one twenty. I wow. see. I, I, <laughs> I see. I we saw. I saw. I saw credit disappear like that. You get a letter. You get a letter from Amex saying that they canceled your card because they. Oh, had, yeah. they oh yeah. Yeah. So it was. A, it was around that time. So when all of this, all of this tragedy was going on, you know, one thank God I was young when it happened. So you know, but at the time, but I, I, was, I was still taking care of my family. My mo my mother that was ill at the time. I was taking care of her, and I was taking care of my little sister. So I mean, I'm carrying a load, you know, as a 21 year old. But what excited me the most was that I had made so much money in such a little amount of time. Mind you, I was at work one day. I had a check in my back pocket in my chef uh, in my chef pants for seventeen thousand five hundred, and that was the first. That was the, that was one portion of the deal that we had just did. And so it was a check for seventeen thousand five hundred. Mind you, I'm making like maybe six seven hundred dollars a week, you know, as a chef in the thing. So sure. I'm just sitting like, and I'm still back there cooking with this big check in my pocket because. <laughs> I was I was doing what I love, you know what I mean. Right. But I was so excited about how you can make so much money so fast, and you could do it on your own terms. That's what fired me up to say, you know what? There's another way around this to kind of maneuver through life. So then that's when I started, you know, my my business journey. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that that's where it started. The market crashed. And I went back to work, you know, because I actually had a skill. So I went back into the restaurant business, but I went back into the restaurant business focused, saying, OK, credit is out the window. All this stuff is going on. I said, so I'm going to make as much money as I can. So I switched from the back of the house to the front of the house. And mm -hmm. um, I went back. I went to serving and bartending because that was the fastest way and which also de developed my customer service personality, because I knew that if I can make people happy, I could get them to tip over 20 percent. Wow. And I used to kill them. <clears throat> So in two years, and this is during the recession, you know, that's, this, I've never actually talked about this openly, but I, I set a number in my mind and I said, the moment that I have $100,000 saved, I'm quitting and I'm going back into real estate. Mm. I, was, I was running so hard that by the time it got, it got time for me to leave, I had saved $130,000, 100% liquid. This is in, 2000, this is in 2009. <clears throat> and immediately, when I had like a little riff with the job that I was at, I had bought uh, Dean Graziosi's book. Because at the time, mo most people also don't remember this. There was there wasn't no real estate influences. There was no meetings around this time. There wasn't nothing. It yeah. was cold out in these streets. <laughs> so for everybody just talking like, "Oh, I hope we go through another recession." You might want to rethink that. It was, it was, it was a, brother. Say that. <laughs> re re rethink it. It was a very it was a very cold time. There was a website at that time that was called foreclosure.com that my friend introduced me to that's where you got all the foreclosure listings and i'm talking about it was you talking about thousands of houses so right. i it took me about three months to uh locate my first properties but i was taking every single day for about a month straight i was up i had a list of properties and i was driving around with my chihuahua in the car every day looking at houses in pittsburgh uh oakland city now mind you this is i was over there then and when I tell people, people hear me that they don't believe. It. I say, man, it was scary back then. Wow. It was. It wasn't nothing like it was today. You wasn't walking around in those bandos like you was back. No, 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 no. You don't have oh, right. the house that we went into that had dead bodies in them. We walk, oh, we're going. Yeah. We're going in the houses and they were trapping out the back door. I'm telling you, man. Like it was. A, it was a time. But this was the character building phase for me. I, if I, I made it. I, I mind you. I relaunched my real estate business during the time when everybody was running. So it's, it's at this point, it's fearless, you know? So I, I was, uh, so I, I look, uh, ended up buying my first, my first property coming back into the market, 1181 McDaniel Street. And then right after that, I purchased uh, 1135 Oakland Drive. Then I bought uh, 1125 Smith Street. 
And then I bought one on Elizabeth Avenue. And those are the first properties that I had, but I owned them free and clear. And I, I rented all the rooms. So I had a total of 17 rooms that I was managing by myself. Wow. Wow. So, wow. so if you so if you, you really want to learn, hey, I've done it. I've done it all. <laughs> you know, and that that's, listen, experience, first of all, is the greatest teacher, whether it's for teaching yourself or being able to teach somebody else. Uh -huh. You know, so living through that, you know, having that experience, man, going through that. Now, my, my career started a little bit earlier than the, than the, the crash phase, but. I could just imagine the mindset. Like when I went through it, I was just like, whoa, everybody running. See, it was easy for me because I could duck behind, you know, a lot of the other cats that was doing it. Like they quitting, I'm quitting. You know, they yeah. running, I'm running. You know, yep. but then some other situations like they going to jail, I'm going to sit my happy ass down. <laughs> hey, and that's what happened. Now, mind you, I was, I was, I started investing in the areas that the banks redlined. Everywhere you well, went, first they, property in Georgia was red line. The first yeah, they, was red they line would, right after I bought it. <laughs> they would that no lender would lend in 30314, 30318, 303. Most people don't remember. Now it's the hot. They would not they wouldn't lend a nickel. Exactly. If you didn't have cash, you couldn't do nothing. And the little I mind you, I quit. I had no job. I had no other income coming in. I said, because the thing was is that you know, I, I believed in me. And I know what I'm capable of doing. There's something about our hustle, our Midwest hustle, is that you know, like as long as I can get up, as long as I can get up, I can make it happen. And I quit, I quit, I quit cold turkey with the cash that I had saved, no credit at that time, and I was just going for it. And here we are. You know, I, I you you mentioned redlining, and I want to tell the folks a little bit about what that is. And you, know, <laughs> you also said something about. Uh, folks not wanting to go into another recession. You like to rethink that. Now, Re rethink that. <clears throat> during that time <laughs> when the recession was happening, now you know we've been hearing we had been hearing the bubble, the bubble, the bubble. I had no idea what the bubble was. I'm like, okay, yeah, they've been saying that for a few years. It may happen, it may not. So when it actually started happening, you know, I had properties. I, I finally sold my last one in February 2008. So I'm thinking, you know, everything's still good. So stuff started declining. And a lot of my investor partners were calling me up saying, you know, we're going to take a break and see what happens next, this, that, and the other. You know, I think at the time, MCI and all these other big places were going under. And they were like, yeah, this is, this is a good sign for us to take a break. I'm like, I had not had that type of experience at that time to understand what that meant. Now, you know, you want to know, you want to know what, what, what you just said, what that reminds me of what's happening right now. Yes. See, every, everybody's, everybody's drunk off of the upswing, which no, but nobody's actually taking the real skill to really understanding how to maintain through this business because people don't understand it will not always be like this. Absolutely. There, there, Absolutely. We, there, when I was doing it, when I, everybody that's flipping now, you know, I'm excited. You not realize that we had, you, you, there were there were no comps, right? We, we went into an area there were no comparables, and you couldn't <laughs> make them. Mind you, this is this is this is four years before they even started lightening up on. It. So mind you, I was I was I was actually flipping properties, retail in Pittsburgh, wow, for, for forty three and forty five thousand dollars. Mind you, we were buying them for ten. We were renovating. This is what they were selling for at that time. Retail people, most people don't even remember that. Right. You know, right. But through that, it taught me. It taught me all the skills about appraisals, about this, about that, about which make which makes the business. It makes it. It makes it like flaw. It's simple for me these days because I, I I understand I understand all these things. And you know, and and that's the thing. Like most people don't get. Like you know, we can say simple. We, it, the business is simple because we grasp a lot of the concepts, but mm -hmm. I, I dare not get these folks to believe in that it's easy. No, you know? <laughs> it's, it, it, it's there's there's a lot that you have there's a lot that you have to understand and pay attention to right now. Do I tell everybody? I say it's very easy. <clears throat> it is right okay. now to this day. If you think that you're out there and it's hard, you ain't seen hard. Oh yeah, this, this yeah. is easy. You you yeah. you guys are getting appraisals that are getting pulled out of your butts and just oh and this is, you ain't seen hard right you right. ain't you ain't you ain't seen hard but but that really built up the you know, the character for but yeah but yeah today it's reminding me what's going on today you know appraisals through you 
there's how I see some. How the hell did they get that number for that? But it reminds me of what happened before, <clears throat> which I'm sure you're going to get down into the line. You know why I chose to do some of the things that I'm doing now, because yeah. I see now is the perfect time to diversify because I don't care what nobody says. What goes up? Must. Coming down. Must. And when, and when, when you've seen it, I'm seeing that I'm seeing the same things, but I'm seeing it done a little bit more strategically. Before it was just like it was just irresponsible. But now the same things are happening, but it's just more strategically. <clears throat> right. And what do I say? What do I mean by strategically? Nobody can ever go nobody can go back and look and see any other time in history when the interest rates have continued to go down. Continue. And, and, and where they are now, I've never seen this before. There you go. So, but why, why was that done? That's a, it's, a, it's a strategic movement by the financial institutions to be able to keep money flowing and keep inventory selling. Absolutely, absolutely. Even though, even though everybody that knows that the interest rate should be somewhere around like six or seven percent. Yes, yes. See? So well, how, how do I know all of this stuff? When the market crashed, I went, I worked in the financial services industry for six years. Oh, well, you want to talk about some money? I can tell you. That's why things are so easy because now you understand all the different, all the different. So I see what's going on. So I'm taking advantage of it, but I'm taking advantage of it smart. Definitely. Definitely. <clears throat> so let's get into some of your, uh, some of your, oh, Marcus said, so Marcus said that we missed you on Monday. Uh, <laughs> Yo, I, swear, I got, I got tied up at the restaurant. I thought it was eight o'clock. And then I look on my phone and I'm at the register and I'm like, oh man, I'm supposed to be on this call. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I was. I thought it was at seven. Mm-hmm. And then I looked at the flyer. I said, wait a minute, it's at six. I set my alarm to get on at, a set, at seven. So yeah. It was- <laughs> we, we, we blew that. Marcus, we sorry, bro. We're going to definitely well, hey, do that I, again. I apologize, man. I owe you guys. Definitely got to do that again. Um, so let's get into it, man. Let's go ahead and get into it. Why? Let's talk about diversification, first of all. Yeah. Let's talk about that. And then I want to get into talking about how, why you diversified, and then how, what, well, what made you diversify, and then why now at, at this current time in the market. Okay, so so what 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 we get into everything that people learn. Everything that I do is planned out. Everything I do is planned out, and Absolutely. I think about it, and I make a plan and write it down, and I say I'm going to go step by step. So that process for me when I do it is normally slower, but it's bulletproof. And I'm going to explain why I say bulletproof because I do the research and I find out financially or economically what position I need to be in in order to make this thing work. And then what I do is I build up my foundation to be able to support that. So what, I'm sorry, what, what was the first question? Uh, what made you what made you decide to diversify now? Oh, oh, because oh, because I've been through this before. And the one thing about it is that I was like, you got you have to diversify, but you have to diversify in a smart manner, right? So I, I, my, I chose not to do traditional rentals anymore just because I see that. And no, please, anybody that's watching, nobody take any offense to what I say. This is just <clears throat> my analysis based off of my investment personality. Right. And if you've never sat down with like a real financial advisor or an investment advisor, everybody's, they, ma- they make you do a financial needs analysis and then they make you, they do a, uh, a sub, uh, whatever the test is they give you, but they basically ask you based off of your goals and where you're trying to go, that's how they base your investments, right? So if you're younger, you can take, you can make more aggressive moves early on, so therefore you can grow faster. But if you come in towards the end and you just need your, your, your goal is preservation of capital and all these other things, and they put you in safer investments. I'm at the stage where I took everything and looked back and I said, okay, I don't want to do traditional rentals because I think they're stagnant and people and most people that haven't owned properties for longer than two or three years, you won't, you won't see it until about that second or third year. that, yeah, you're getting a thousand dollars a month now, but you know how properties start wearing out on you. So you, you'll, that, you'll start decreasing in your profit. Then after four years, you're no, no longer able to use those as a, as a, um, you can't use depreciation anymore. So you start losing, losing your benefits and then they start costing you money. But most people that are just getting into the game, most people, realistically, they're only on their second year of actually owning rental property. Some of them, some of them are just now in like a year and a half. You'll see what I'm talking about going down the line. But I've done it, so I've been there. I know. So I chose to diversify and also diversify outside of real estate. So what I did was I diversified the real estate business. But then I also said I need I need to step into something that has nothing to do with real estate because most people, what you have to understand. Is that you? So I take that. I think like a bank, and I think like a lender. They're mm-hmm. the best at protecting themselves. 
right. right? People are always pissed off at them about appraisals and all this other stuff, but their job is to protect their investment. That's why they'll undervalue a property so that if they get stuck with it, they know they can get rid of it at the same time. But that's why that's why they keep dropping their AR. Most people don't understand it. They're protecting themselves. It, right. it actually has very little to do with the property and more about their risk management. That's right. insurance. Absolutely. Risk management. So it's just like if you're old and you come to me for insurance, I'm probably going to charge you way more because there's a likelihood that you might die and I might have to pay out. Right. But if you're younger, they're like, oh, you know, I'll give. So basically, I just look, I forecast it. And I, I, I looked at my life and I said, how much longer do you want to do this? And my mind and my body said not too much longer. Like, because everything has to be, mm -hmm. everything has to be progressive. So yeah. there, there's yeah. other things, even outside of what I'm doing now, that I need to strive for. So I said, <clears throat> I'm not going to be running around for another three years flipping houses. I've been doing, I've been doing it. I've been. So what made me diversify was to say I forecast and I look to see more so what was coming, but what I wanted my life to look like. And I list, I looked at, you remember when I did the, that, the little quick analysis for you? Definitely. You did. I do, I, yeah. I do that. I do that for myself every quarter. I, I sometimes just revisit. So it just, I, literally, I just said, okay, real estate is booming right now. You got it. You like I'm like I'm literally doing houses, buying them and selling them, and I never see them. And I'm not talking about wholesale, right? This right. I want to be the line of how good I've gotten at understanding <clears throat> renovation, square footage, and everything. I buy houses cash that I've never walked in. Most mm -hmm. of them I don't even drive through because I trained myself doing that years ago. And I buy them and I sell them. I but mind you, I close on them. I own them for like maybe a month. And then I'm like, okay, look, we'll put it on the market this month. And boom, we're turning around. So now, okay, so I think at that point, it's safe to say you kind of got this under control. Right. Now right. I said, okay, but that, but that's still active income, you know, mm -hmm. breaking that down. So active income, me, I still have to do this every single day. And so I was like, you know, I didn't want to veer too far outside of it. I said, how can I, how can I make, have a, how can I work on my residual income? but stay, still stay inside of real estate. There's a couple other directions. So at the beginning of the year, I reactivated my license. So I, I initially was licensed in 2012. <clears throat> okay. okay. No, 11, whatever. During, during the recession, I, I got my license mm -hmm. and I uh, didn't use it much then, but then I, I kind of, I let it, uh, I let it, I went uh, inactive, but then at the beginning of the year, I actually started studying last year and I passed it in January, late January. And I immediately, I immediately started not only representing my properties, but the guys that we're wholesaling houses to. Because I'm stepping in, I'm, give, I'm actually giving them good deals. I turn around and we, my team, we get those listings on the back end. Wow. So that, wow. that so, so even so far this year, that's already been like a fifty, sixty thousand dollar raise. Definitely. Off, off of what I've, off of what I, because I just, I looked at the business as a whole and I said, I'm giving away too much money, or I'm leaving too much money on the table. Definitely. So getting my license, that was the first thing to diversify. But then I, I, I tested out Airbnb uh, about two years ago and I learned I, it took it. It doesn't take me long to analyze anything. So I monitored it for about six months and I said, OK, Airbnb is a fantastic business. And anybody that's watching, I'm giving you guys free. I'm giving you guys free game. <clears throat> anybody that's watching, Airbnb will only be profitable for you long term if, if the expenses on the property are under a certain threshold. That's it. Right. Put, put it like put it like this. And this is how you know I'm telling the truth. Remember last year, everybody and their mom was an Airbnb coach. Everybody was doing arbitrage. Everybody was doing all this stuff, right? Remember that? <laughs> how, how how many of them do you hear from now? Very few. Very there few. Why is that? <laughs> Why is that? Because they had they had Airbnbs that had large expenses, and at large expenses, you have to have large bookings. If that doesn't mix, you'll start losing money, and you lose your properties. It happens just like that. So the property that I had had medium expenses, and because but because I had a traditional mortgage on it, and I understood, I said, okay, so now I need to search for Airbnbs that I can have a maximum monthly expenses of a thousand dollars. Worst case. <clears throat> Based off of that, you shouldn't do an Airbnb if it doesn't bring in at least twenty five hundred dollars a month. You subtract that; that's fifty. That's fifteen hundred bucks variable, right? So it can go from fifteen to twenty five. That's mm -hmm. you netting, and then on top of that, I never turn over possession of my property to a tenant, and it's fully furnished and it's always ready to market and sell. Wow. I said, I said I can invest in that. So that's that's my Airbnb model, and I actually talk to my property managers and she said, you know what? What you just said made 100% sense. And this is what they do for a living. 
But right. some people get into Airbnb, they're like, oh, it's like, no, it, it fluctuates. But what I don't like is the fact that now, like you're dealing with the, the memoratorium when, you know, tenants are stuck in their properties. That yeah. will happen. When the recession happens, that will happen. The only people that are going to be uh, protected is Section 8. And I'll be honest with you. I think people have too much. You guys got too much faith in the government. Because I think, I, think I think at one point that shit will shut down too. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm like, what can I do to protect myself? So now we actually, I actually have two. That will be the two that'll be that I'm working on finishing up the renovations that'll be on the market, but I own them free and clear. So it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. There's there's no 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 mortgage on them, no nothing. If then they're and they're gonna perform beautifully. But I did that because I said, okay, I want to separate incomes to where I can some what what I can I don't I did, I wanted to get to a point where I my real estate income was going a hundred percent towards reinvesting into other businesses and my retirement. So mm-hmm. everything that comes from my real estate flipping and whole, all that stuff, so I want a hundred percent of that, and I don't want to touch it. Right. And I'm gonna li- I'm gonna live off of the other stuff, you know, which which, which kind of it keeps you like subtle. So yeah, you might be making you know fifty, sixty, hundred thousand dollars a month over here, but that I, in my mind, that's not my money. Right. 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 So so Airbnb was the first was the one I said okay I can diversify over than this. And mind you, if you're wholesaling. You're in control of all the leads that come in, so you just pick and choose. You say, "Yeah, I could, I could wholesale this one, but now nah, let me hold on to it." You know, now you, you're starting to get back into that mindset where not it's not a good idea to sell it. And then, so that was that was step number one. But then I said, "You know what? I want to take it a step further, just in case this messes up." Yes. Yeah. And and <laughs> there you go. So so mind you, so that's the the whole. I'd say wholesaling and flipping is the same thing to me. That's all the same. Then I was like, okay, let me go back. Let me get back into the Airbnb space. So you know, by summer, by summer, I'll have there'll be I'll have five completely set up and ready to go. Now I don't think you, you don't necessarily need more than that because then it becomes like a business that you got to manage and you know all this other stuff. Five, I've already did the numbers on that and the income from that. I, and I always base everything off of a worst case scenario thing. Mm-hmm. And I said it'll be beautiful. So I was like, okay, so I'm protected there. But then I said, you know what? Like I still need a little bit more security, right? Because people, I'm telling when I with the, when every when I, every you guys hear me say something, you gotta understand it comes from experience, and sometimes those first two still may not even be enough, mm. right? So so I said okay, I said I but I said let me step into something that is completely outside of real estate, and that's where the uh, that's where the hot dog factory. Came. Okay, okay. So the hot dog factory. What did what did that come into play? How did how did that come into play? November, November twenty first, two thousand eighteen. I went I went um you know as a lot of people know I partnered with uh, Dr. David Anderson uh, for about two years, and um as a you know just as a brother and as a um, you know as a friend I support everything that everybody does, and he was uh, speaking at a friend at the franchise expo that they do every year at the Cop Galleria on the Saturday afternoon, and I went. I went to go show him support. In my mind, I said, yeah, I'm gonna go hear him speak, but I said, let me see what these franchises are talking about. Mm-hmm. And uh, and the hot dog factory was one of the uh, one of the um, the ones that one of the uh, ones that was there. But in, as, as an investor, I told you how I analyze everything. They were the only franchise that made sense to invest in. Really? E- really? Yeah, everything, everything else I felt like had an astronomical price. I mean, you're talking you're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars to step into something that you might not even make money in. I was like, well, was, I'm already I'm doing real estate. I was like, why would I diversify that kind of money over to here? And then it's when you my mind when you spend it on the restaurant, it's gone. When you spend it in, on and on the house, no, nah, you 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 can mess up and still even recover. But right. when you you send off that franchise fee, you pay for your build out, you get that inventory in, you get those employees rocking and rolling, you start you get your insurance. I'm this. This is I'm dealing with this every day. Right. It's gone, and now it had you have it comes back to you over time in revenue. And when I looked at some of those numbers, I was like, uh, uh-uh, I don't right. know about that. <laughs> but when I when I looked at the numbers, I looked at two things: the numbers and the product. The product, right. the product was one that was missing in the marketplace. That's another way that I, I analyze whether I do a fix and flip. I'll mm-hmm. look in an area and I'll look at all the other renovations and I'll say, can I bring value to this area? If I can't, I won't do it. That's why I, I don't do a, I don't do a lot of properties down in Southwest Atlanta where everybody else is because the, the game itself has changed and you have to bring a superior product. Right. Yeah. 
and just just where I am, I said I don't want to get into that. Okay. okay. Right. So that so now my flipping model is in a totally different market that nobody else is in, and I'm killing them because <laughs> I found I found a gap in the market where I could bring value, and people are eating it up. They're flying off the shelf. So the hot dog factory came in one, mostly like I explained it, like I've been in the hospitality business since I was 15, around 27 is when I completely left. So this is what I, this is my initial, this is what I did. Like it, it was a job, but I loved it. Like I loved customer service. I loved cooking. I loved, like I enjoyed it. So for me to step back in and do it, even when I go in and do it now, it's not even a job. Like I'm in there having fun. It's still even weird. This yeah. kind of like, yo, you know, you know, you own this, right? And I'm just like, yeah, I guess I do. It's, it's, still, it's still weird. <laughs> but you know, when I, when I came by that time, I could tell, you know, you could tell when somebody is doing something in there and their element, you know, it was like, you didn't miss a beat. You know what I mean? You came out, greeted us, you got back to work, you know, you came out and greeted again, got back to work, you know, because you knew what it takes to continue to run that thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Again, I, I salute you, man, because. I, yeah, yeah. So, what I, so I looked at that and I looked at the potential revenue and um, I looked at the overhead. So I just like just like I analyzed the Airbnbs, I looked at it and said, okay, what is it going to cost me to run it? And then on the worst case scenario, where it w- what's going to be the bottom line? And when I looked at that, and I was just like, hey man, I said I said I could live with that. And yeah. so I, I said so I, I initially said I was like I said let me give it a shot on one location. And you know going through when I talk talk to you about building up foundations. And I was talking to my assistant about this the other day. I always preach to people, don't get too caught up in lending and don't get too caught up in private money. Mm-hmm. All of those are great options. But <clears throat> me and you come from a world or and we come from an upbringing where you can only rely on yourself. True. So True. the other stuff is great. But for me, is what can I do and maintain by myself? That's how I base everything that I do off of because at the end of the day, you're stuck with it. You know what I mean? Definitely. So <clears throat> I looked at the initial investment of it and I said, I can do this. I can pay for it, which I did. Like I, I when it came for the uh, the franchise fee, it came towards the uh, the bill. Every everything was cash, right? It was just like we were doing houses. Mm-hmm. So therefore, so my only overhead is the business expenses. I don't owe anybody anything for it. So like mm-hmm. I said, so if it works. It's gonna work great. If it doesn't work, it'll start breaking even, and it'll just be for the people. But like we've only been in there for thirty days, and I'm already looking at the numbers, and I'm like, damn. I was like, maybe I need to do three or four more of these things. Right. <laughs> and and I was and you know I think you know we we always talked a lot about uh, coaching and why like a lot of people you know they they think that coaching is expensive, and they think you know they always talk about pricing. <clears throat> I'll be the first person to tell you, even as a seasoned person, I was in the business for fourteen. You know, 14, 15 years. I paid twenty thousand, a uh, twenty thousand dollar. Uh, no, it was more than that. But the franchise fee that I paid was for coaching. Right. 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 I paid. Exactly. I paid. I paid for a coaching system and a program that they walked me step by step on how to do everything. I still don't even know how we went from A to B because that I, that's what I paid for. Right. So right. that's what that's what coaching is. Like I mm-hmm. I didn't pay them. A franchise fee. I paid them so that I didn't have to figure out all this stuff by myself. We yeah. we had a, we had a, we had a hundred percent uh, health code uh, inspection. I don't even know how we did it. Right. <laughs> because there's a system. There's there you go. I, I you call. Call. There you go. I I followed them. I I didn't step in and say, oh, I've been doing this for. A there were a lot of things that I saw that they weren't doing that I knew they could be done. But I didn't. But you don't come in with that mentality. Exactly. These people. These people have expanded into multiple states and done this and this and that. Yo. Shut up and follow them. Hey, if it's two shakes on the fries, do two shakes of salt yeah, on the fries. You, hey, look, look, you say you say you say seven ounces. I'm doing seven ounces. Seven you ounces. Say seven, I'm doing this. I, I'm not here to recreate the will, but that. Right. But I'm, but that's where experience and wisdom comes in. Sometimes, Absolutely. sometimes shut up and follow the people that have done it. And my my store is running like clockwork. I'm not even there right now, man. You know. Hey, that's that's the kind of that's when you when you get smart enough to take your ego out of it because a lot of times that's all it is. Like when you just you just mentioned that conversation that we had. You sat me down, you know, who I'm I, I might be a, have a few more years of experience in real estate investing than you, but in terms of finances, you said <laughs> to me that made so much sense. I was like, wait a minute, hold on now. I need to I had to reevaluate my whole situation. Do you remember that? Yep. 
Forget real estate. Look, I gotta check my life. This brother got my life right in about yeah. five minutes. <laughs> yeah, and so, and so, so, sometimes that's all it takes. And you know, over the years, what I've learned is that uh, ego and emotion are are the two the two number one things that can destroy you and people that want to help you. Absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm I'm big on so anything that I do. There's no there's confidence in what I do. So if you're wrong, and we're going to negotiation, which happens every single day with appraisers and stuff like that. I I'll argue with you all day long, but that's not that's not ego. But ego and emotions is the number one way to ruin you know a potential deal of relationships and stuff like that. So right. I, I put all years ago. There's 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 no ego. There's no ego. There's no emotion. Nothing. Real stuff, real stuff. And, you know, it's, it's those kind of lessons, man. I think those of us that do business, uh, well, you know, it's specifically real estate. Of course, the show is about real estate. But those of us that do business, when we understand that when you when you come upon somebody who's a, who's a mentor, who's an educator, or who's somebody just experienced in the area, mm -hmm. you got to let your ego, leave your ego to the side. You know, leave your ego to the side because that's and that's what I find in a lot of cases cost a lot of people when they're trying to grow or they're trying to scale or they're just trying to learn something simple. Yep. You know, I you know, I have a few students that they they still listen, but they try and go about it their own way. But it's like if you follow the system <clears throat> that I set up for you, you could at least get the type of success that I'm showing you that it's possible that you could get. You know, yep. but some people you got to. Well, just like you said, in that and that and those options, you got two things. You can sit there and you kind of beat beat on the head and try to explain it to them, or you can treat them like the prodigal son. Say, yeah. go ahead, go ahead and come back when you're ready. <laughs> that's because that's I'm like I'm at the point now, like where like I had a conversation with a, a gentleman that you know I used to you know was talking about doing business there, but I told him I said I'm not the same person as I was last year. I said what I had time for last year, I don't have time for this year. Real stuff. What, what I was talking to you about last year, mind you, I've already executed and I've gone to the next step. I I can't come back. Right. I can't like I don't I don't have time for that this year. And then what I what I had time for this year, next year it ain't gonna be there. So you oh. know, is it you just you really so when people are there and like if they like if they're that what the way that I am now, like I try to give it to you and then they don't take it, hey, that's on you. True story, true story. Hey, and listen, it's it's knowing, it's knowing, like you know, it, it takes some time, I guess, to develop that understanding of when to be able to let the prodigal son go. You know, because when, when I <laughs> when I tell you, man, that maturity comes in, maturity comes in different phases, and I had to really understand that. Like, so I had to grow up emotionally, I had to grow up spiritually, I had to grow up financially. There's you most you realize there are a lot of people that have not grown up. Right. There's certain things that you do here that you don't do here. Exactly. If, you're, if you're trying to tell, if you're trying to say, "Oh, I want to change my life and I want to do this and this and that," but then you're still doing this childish. You know when you know when I uh, when I uh, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. That's People don't word. do that. Yeah, <laughs> that's I'm telling. you. When I tell you, and like I don't get on here to preach to nobody. Like, this this is just things that I just kind of live by. But, hey, brother, preach, but, preach, if that's what but, it but, takes. But everybody, everybody that's listening, you go, we go, you go pay Tony Robbins fifteen thousand dollars, twenty thousand, all these other people. But do you not understand that all the information that they're giving you is the same information that's in the word that they got it from? They mm -hmm. all tell you, <laughs> Su success is in the word. Everything that you're waiting for is waiting for you in a place called obedience. That place of obedience is disguised as a place that's called there. He tells you to get there. I have it waiting for you there. But the only way that you're going to get there is that you have to grow up. You have to stop doing what you were doing before. You have to make this portion of your life better. You can't come halfway and be like, oh, I'm good over here financially, but then you're still a dirt bag in your lifestyle, right? You wow. can't you, you can't you, you can't be out here preaching, you know, why how African Americans need to stay together and this and this and that and blah blah and all this other stuff, but you can't keep your household together. None of this stuff. None of this stuff makes sense. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, Grant, Grant, Mo, Grant Cardone. Uh, to my, still to this day, my favorite book out of any business book in the world is "Be Obsessed with the Average" because he talked about some hardcore, raw stuff. But the number one thing that he said is, he said, "You can't just be obsessed with making money." He said, "You got to be obsessed with being a better father. You got to be obsessed with being a better husband." He said, "You got to be obsessed with your health." You got to be upset. He said, because it comes as a package. 
He said, yeah. what, what he said, he said, what what sense does it make for me to give you everything you need to do and you go out and make all the money in the world, but then you're addicted to cocaine and then you're cheating on your wife and you're doing it. so people everybody that's watching understand the reason why you people keep seeing me year after year is because this is all that I focus on and I focus on growth. So for me, we're talking about money. I, money is just a byproduct of doing these things. Wow. But but wow. the benef- the benefit what happens to me in my life. And you know, I used to have sleep. I used to have sleeping problems. I had insomnia since I was a kid. I sleep like a baby now. <laughs> right? I don't. I don't have. So there's you. You start changing things, and then your life gets better, and then your life <clears throat> becomes a reflection of the people that are around you. Definitely, definitely. You know what I mean? So, so bit like I said. So what I'm I'm learning now that business and everything that we do is just a byproduct of how our life is. Real you stuff. Know, and so I spent I spend a lot of time working on these things. And business just becomes easy. Like I, we, there's thing, and you have, you got also like, remember we we're talking about protecting or preparing yourself for. You have to, pre- you have to cover yourself because even when you're going through this path, that's another thing that people never really talk about. Mm-hmm. The things that will come after you to try to derail your success. <clears throat> right. I had, I had a customer that came up yesterday. It was day before yesterday, and he wasn't even buying nothing, and he was pushing me to that point where I was about to wreck what I had just built. Wow. Like wow. it was it it was that serious. My assistant was looking at me. The customers were looking. They was like, yo, they was like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? And he was just he, it was like he wanted to bring that out of me, but I was like, I recognize it and I said, nah, nah, I was like, we're not gonna go there. And you know, it went on for like 10, 15 minutes, and then you know, I eventually got the guy away. I went outside and talked to him and I tried to talk to him just calmly, and mm-hmm. you could just tell that he just had something inside it. It had nothing to do with me. Wow. <laughs> Wow. And I just and I just walked away from it. So that's another thing that people need, need to understand. Even once you get on that path, oh, they coming for you. It's gonna be friends. Oh, it's, yeah. gonna, it's gonna be friends. It's gonna be family. It's gonna be everybody around. But you, but you have to be so convicted and solid in your feet on what you're supposed to be doing and where you're walking that nothing can knock you off. Man, man, bro. Hey, listen. You bring in the A game today, brother. Listen. Um, I, man, listen. I don't know. We 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 had we had a script we were supposed to go by, but I think no, you know, go you know, no, start with you know, all that already. <laughs> start, start, go ahead. Whatever listen, we didn't make, go ahead. I I definitely appreciate it, man, because the the stuff that you're sharing is real life stuff, you know. And I think these are the these are the surface things that a lot of times people don't address before they want to get to like you got people that want to come into business they want to become entrepreneurs they want to make all this money they want to do all these major major things and have all these major accomplishments but they don't want to take care of the surface stuff you know and, I mean? and, like the and surface stuff becomes immaterial unfortunately for some people and they never get to that level that they want to get to because they don't address those things because that that's the fi- that's that's the foundation Definitely. that's, that's what absolutely I'm talking about. absolutely the foundation the, and, and everything I talk about is foundational, man. If you don't take it, just like in the house, why, why do people understand one of the hardest things for you to pass when you're building houses is the foundation inspection? Foundation inspection, yeah. Because they know that if it's not done right or it's not properly unseated, it'll crack and then the rest of the house will go. Everything's coming down. <laughs> so so when, I, when I understood that, I'm just like, man, I was like, so let me start work. Let me just map out. Let me look and see what do I need to work on personally? Because everything inside of us, we have all the tools that we need to be successful, but sometimes it's what's in here that won't allow you to become successful. It'll, it, it, it won't allow you to open up your mind because you've been lied to or you've been stolen from. So now you can't open up your idea to partnership. So now everything that you know, when somebody wants to collaborate with you that has all the money, yeah. now you don't want to share the information with them because of the people that you used to work with and they stole your ideas and all this other stuff. You got to let that shit go. Wow. So now... You know, because like Bishop Bronner said the best, he said, he said, it's not the money that starts the idea. It's the idea that starts the money. So yeah. sometimes most people, every you know, every time we, we do our things and people are always talking about, well, where do I go for financing? Or where, where do we go for this? Or where can I go to get people to help fund my deals? You're asking the person that can do it. Yes. It's right. It's right in front of you. I would love for somebody to call me up and say, hey, I got this deal that we can do this and this. And that. OK, boom, let's do a wire transfer. Like right. you don't got to search far and high. For all for the thing is sometimes it's right in front of you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Real stuff, man. Real stuff. Brother, I gotta ask the question. With everything now, we, we only touched on a couple of things that you got going on. I mean, I know there's a there's a, a laundry list of things that you do in the unique group. Um, 
let's let's go back. Let's go back a little bit. Tell the folks what the unique group is and tell us what are the number of things that you do within the unique group. Okay, so the the unique group, it honestly it just started off as it was just me and an agent and a contractor. But I always had the vision of doing a lot of things, but a lot of things are in the same circle for success. So remember we did that circle. I right now can right do the platform and show you that I run a company for this because this company prepares the person for this. And then when they come into this program, they're already financially prepared to start investing. But then when they start investing, they start making money. This other company is the one that directs them on where to diversify. Mm -hmm. And then based off of where they're ready to diversify, now we have the umbrella of options of other companies that we can help you invest in that have nothing to do with this, right? So right. that's what that's what the unique group is. So basically, I'm <clears throat> in the process of how I, I still don't even know how to do it because there's there's so much red tape behind it because we're basically doing what's what Smith Barney and all the big financial firms are doing, but I'm replacing market investment with active investments that are out here that you can see and control every single day. Because I'm still, I'm still the biggest believer that I'll tell anybody, I don't care who you put me in front of. If you trust Wall Street with your wealth, you get exactly what you deserve. Wow. I know the game. I know the game. I've heard the media. It is not for you to succeed. Right. Right. They don't they don't care about you and they care about the bottom line, which is assets under management, which that money is leveraged to do the to do all the things that are pushing African. Look, I'm not even going into it politically. I know the game, so therefore I'm not playing. Definitely. definitely. Right. So that's exact that's what it is. So it and then also in, inside of that is what what I what I want to call is gonna be our pleasure business. And a pleasure business is something that I can't wait. Like within the next year and a half, it'll be fully launched. Like we're, we're working on everything now. But this is a company where we are going to take entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs, seasoned entrepreneurs, married couples, whatever, and show them once you go through this, 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 this. Now we're going to show you a much better lifestyle for 10 times better price. And they're going to eat it up just like that because they're like, because I got one, but we never leave this philosophy or anything that I ever say. Why in the hell would you want to work for 20, 30, and 40 years and mm. retire just to drive around 285 every day? Get the hell out. Wow. <laughs> you know, so, but but in, there, there, are, there are a few countries that we, we've already pinpointed where we're going to start doing our retirement communities. And we call them retirement communities. Don't think like it's old people stuff. <clears throat> but these are progressive uh, countries and towns that I'm talking about the living is phenomenal. For a fraction of the price. So yeah, so you, you keep everything. So we're showing them, hey, build up your real estate portfolio, open up this company, do this and this and this. You want to be over here in this country, so have, make sure you have your uh, you have your uh, residual uh, revenue or income that's coming in. So you'll be somewhere around twenty five, thirty thousand dollars to run over here. Which your life over here is going to be great because if you come through our process, I'm tell, I'm like we. It's so ruthless that I'm telling you, you need to get rid of this. You need to get rid of this. This is unnecessary. You need to get rid of this. You don't want to do it. I don't want to work. With because it only works one way. Right, right. right? And but I want to be in the position to where I don't have to water down my standards of what I know will work just to get clientele. Like, I'm um, going to be, well, I mean, I'm already at this point, but I'm going to be where I'm not worried about money at all when I do this. Because that's, I, that's when I really feel like you're able to do things the way that you want because you know that they're right. right. So if, so, if somebody wants, <clears throat> if you got a client that says that they want this, but they want to leave at they want to live at an eighty percent debt to income ratio, dude. I'm not working with you. You like you you mentally are not where I need you to be in order to get you to where you need to go. Yo, do whatever you want to do. Like you said, product was son. I'll let you go. Come talk to me in a year. Real stuff. So real. It, so inside of this is nothing but is it, it it's a unconventional financial services company. Okay. Okay. So with, so with, you... with, with, with real estate and business as the alternative investments. That mind you. That you control, you're not you're not investing with us so that you can grow. Your family owns. If you pass away, they own this company. They own this company that you can either liquidate or they can keep coming through. Like because one thing about it is that you know if you never learned anything from Tyler Perry, Master P, or any of the people that made it big in the industry, they made it faster and higher than anybody else because of ownership. 
ownership, real stuff. He, he, real he, stuff. He, mind you, Tyler Perry's start was a little bit, you know, people like, oh, this is ghetto. But he owned everything. Yes. He owns the rights to it. You know, uh, Master P, after watching uh, his, uh, his No Limit thing, he owned all his masters. Right. He started the deal that got everybody in the industry making money, but he owned everything and just gave away just a little piece. So we want to push that exact same thing, but because all the people that are going to be advising you are, are have well, have already gone through programs with me, so they're either going to be in the high seven a high six figure net worth or seven figure net worth. So they not they not stressing about trying to sell you a product just so they can make a commission because they got money, they right. invested already. Right. So it, it's really going to be. A business that's re- that we we can really tell people the truth and say, yo, you make a decision. Where and just where I, I've always been really good at doing this, I say, dude, if you don't do it, I'm gonna do it. Right. Like with, with like two 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 of our uh, two of our wholesale deals that turned into Airbnbs, I spent so much time trying to show people what they couldn't see that I convinced myself, don't sell it. <laughs> got it. Got it. That, that's how that's how good the things that that we scope out are. So, but, but yeah, but that's all in the works. But we're we're like. We're like still on phase three, and like it's a, you know, it's it's a process. So there, there's there's no reason to rush it. But being successful in the in all the areas that I'm showing people, so therefore I'm not I'm not I don't want to be one of the preachers that are talking about it, but they haven't actually done it. And Atlanta's full of those. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're 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 giving you theory, but they haven't actually done it. Everything that I I, I can I can I have do- documentation of these conversations all day long. And really? continue not dumb it and then stop, but still continuously do it. Okay. So, so are you taking on new clientele right now, or are you? No, uh, absolutely okay. not. Hell so, no! Look, I, look I, I barely got time to sleep. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hell no! Don't call me. No. What, what is? What hey, is listen, listen. I want to say this though. Prepare yourself. Master the money game is coming back March twenty twenty one. I'm ready. Come back yeah. upstairs. Come back upstairs. Hey. And, and, yeah. and, but you, Glenn, you want to know what's funny? You want to know what's funny about that? What's that? That what you guys are eventually about to pay twenty, thirty thousand dollars in the future for. I've been doing the same presentation. Yes. <laughs> I have not changed it because there's no reason to. And Glenn is giving it to you guys for ninety nine dollars. And right. the play, right. and, I'm, and I'm just gonna say this to our people: the place has never been packed. And I, you think this is something I go off because, mind you, all the way. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I, can, I can more, the, but the presentation hasn't changed since I did it, since I did it for Don. There's no reason to change it. It's Real the tough. exact same. It. I don't care what the economy is doing. Everything is the same. Real this stuff. step to this Real step, step to this step to this step to this step, and I'm not changing. And it's relevant. It's relevant every single time. That's the that's the beauty of it, man. Like. You know, when you when you break that stuff down, like I don't know, I think the first time after the first time you did it, you were you were a little curious about what people were thinking. But when we did the reviews, man, bruh, they were blown away. And you know why? Because because I break down a thing that like I like I said it on another interview. I said that I'm actually surprised that people are paying for mentorship and the mentors that they're teaching this. I so they're only I always said this is that people get a little bit of information. And they run with it and they say, I'm gonna share it with the world, but not understanding that you're you're teaching a kid, you're giving the you're giving the kid a machine gun. Yeah. That's what that's what you're doing. And eventually they're yeah. they're gonna hurt themselves. Right. You right. know how I know this? Because I get the phone calls from them after they've already got hit in the face with the gun from the wow. <laughs> That happens a lot of times. <laughs> and and it, it's from all different areas. And my whole thing is I'm just saying because when people you gotta understand when you when you're given, you know, with, with you know great response, great reward, great responsibility, well, however that one goes, people look at you as they look at you as so if you tell them something, they're gonna believe you. If I tell them something, they're gonna believe. If Ron tells them something, they're gonna believe. If John tells them something, they're look, dude. There's a responsibility behind that you have Absolutely. to take so seriously yes. because, mind you, I'm gonna say this is something that nobody has ever really come out and said. Based off of whatever you tell them, they're about to go and make a life-changing financial decision. Yes. And if you don't take that shit so, excuse my language, but if you don't take that serious enough. That somebody is taking your information and is willing to risk their financial livelihood on it. Right. You don't right. deserve to be on any platform. Shut up. Sit to the back of the line. 
because the phone calls that I'm giving, the one that I, that the message I just went through last week, there's a, there's a person and they, they lost their life savings. Wow. Wow. Off of, off of, I'm telling you, dude, this, this is why I, I preach when, when I get, I, I get worked up like this because dude, these, and I get those calls and you, you got to hear these people emotions and yeah. they're telling you that they're afraid to tell their wives what happened because they emptied out their retirement account and she doesn't know and max out the credit card. Because wow. somebody like me and you, I protected people in projects. I, I, I used to advise, I was like, yo, I wouldn't do that project if I was you. And they say, why? And I know because I say, dude, you don't have the experience to do it. Are the numbers right? Yes. Everything is fine about this thing. You don't have the experience. You don't have the connection. You don't know who to call if you get into this. And I said, you being a newbie, these contractors are going to swallow you alive. Real stuff. That's what they do for a living. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, so my job is to protect you. And yeah, you might not make 60, 70,000 off your first deal. Look, bro, if you make, if you make 25 grand off of your first deal, and you learn the valuable process of going through the appraisal, going through the inspection. Yeah, you won. Like yeah. you won. Real life real estate investing. <laughs> right, but, but no, but that, that's not what they're telling everybody. They're giving everybody these pie in the sky thing, and um, that's that, yeah. that's what that's one of the reasons why. Outside of you, and like maybe one one other person, I don't get on anybody else's platform. Like so, if you if you ask me to get on your platform, and I tell you I'm busy, or I don't get on. It's because I don't believe what you're. And mind you, I'm not I'm not in this business to make friends. I don't care whether nobody likes me. You know why? Because nothing I do, mind you, and the only, I, I, I hesitated um, on letting people know that I was actually, oh, you know, I didn't start marketing it that I owned it until a week before we opened. I battled in the back of my mind because I said, I don't even want to put out a good product. I don't want it to be attached to me. Right, right, you know, right, right. Some people want that, but some of the most successful businesses, you have no idea who owns it. That's yep. the that's the model that I want. I don't. Oh, this is Rob. No, it's, it's it's the original hot dog factory. They got a reputation of having the bomb hot dogs. People love the funnel cake sticks also. They're coming down here for that. Most of the people that buy houses from me don't even know they're buying it from me because I have layers in between it. Real stuff. That's the that's the way that I want my business to go. Now the lifestyle business. No, that's all me because yeah. I'm the product of the actual lifestyle thing. So, but with the price tag that's coming with that, I mean, I don't care. Like we. <laughs> We shouldn't be lost. But, but no, but that, that's, that's, that's just one thing that I take really seriously. That's why when you said, you said, could I, would I take on uh, new clients? I said no, because one, the amount of time that I would have to take away to do it. Mind you, I'm not even that. I could do it. They could be, they could work with me every single day. One, is going to be expensive, kind of. But two, I don't feel like I have the time to give them everything they need. So I'm not thinking about the money. I'm like, if I teach them, Am I going to be able to give them everything? And right now, no, because we're still we're still running around like crazy. So right. I said no. Maybe sometime next year, possibly. But um, but yeah, but no, like that. You have to take that so seriously. And then, like, I think teaching and coaching, like it, it's got to be a passion. Don't. This is. I'll 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 end on this, and then whatever questions you have, I won't come up with no other stuff. <laughs> if you take care, if you in my presentation. If you prepared through that first preparation stage, it puts you in a place financially where you don't make decisions based off of money. Right. 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 So therefore, the way that my everything is set up, I don't make my next decision over who I work with or what. I don't do it off of money. Is it getting me to the next step where I want to and doing it the right way? And mm -hmm. through that process, am I helping anybody? Every right. time. Well, mind you, when I get paid, <clears throat> my marketing guy gets paid, my sales guy. There is never a transaction that I do and don't nobody get paid. Every time I sell a house, my assistant gets a bonus. Why does she get a bonus? Whether she had whether she had anything to do with the transit that transaction or not, because she kept me away from the restaurant so that I can make this deal happen. That's right. where my mindset is. Right. Right. So I sell a house. I'm cutting her a check. She's like, oh, where did this come from? Because I was able to do this deal. Well, I didn't even do nothing. But because you was here, I was able to do this and go do this and blah, blah, blah. So it's it's a it's a circle thing. I love it. Right? I love it. My, my sales guy, he's he's in Colombia right now. I, I, he sent me a message. And uh, I think, mind you, all he did was send out email. I paid him, I think, like $16,000 this month just for just from selling a couple of properties. My marketing guy, I mean, this, I'm, I'm, I'm being transparent. I ain't not what I made. I still don't even know because when I get paid, it just goes. Away, it goes to other places. So I, I, 
I think I took myself to breakfast one time. Whatever. My my my, my marketing guy. Oh, he, his Christmas is looking real nice because wow. that's how that's how you build a team. And some people think that having people around you make means that you have a team. No, anybody that's ever worked with me, and you know, a lot of people are a product of that. I'm invested in your success. Definitely. Right? So, which means that I have I have goals. I set goals for other people that are on my team that they don't even know. I said I got to pay him this amount this month. I got to make sure I send him this amount this month because if I do that and that, that means that I hit my goals. Right, right, right. right so right. I'm invested in your success, which is another thing about team building. You got to make sure, just like in the word they say, that you have to make sure that people that come in a relationship are equally yoked. It's the same thing in business. Real if, I'm walking, if I'm walking one path, even though you might be good at what you do, you walk, I'm walking one path, but you're walking a completely different path. That's a, that's a partnership that's destined for destruction. Wow! Wow! Because you'll 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 start clashing, because it's like, dude, we every but everybody on my team now we're all going in the same direction. That's why if a deal happens and then we were supposed to make this, but then at the end, you know, between the uh, wire transfer and the funding and this and this and that, you know, this person gets short shorted a thousand dollars. We had we all had to take a part in the fifteen hundred bucks. It's never an issue because he's like, yo, I understand this, so that means, but but the fact that we still got paid gets me one step closer to this. I'm getting closer to this and I'm getting closer to this. And they're like, yo, what's the next deal? It wasn't like that before. Uh, some people don't understand that because you got one person, they're hanging on by a thread and they were counting on that deal to close. And then when it does, it, ha- it closes, but then, hey, you know, the numbers change because they do. It, mm-hmm. happen- it, it, it okay. happens, on, it, it happens on, on almost every single deal. And yeah. when that happens, and then now it's going to cause a rift because of the, oh, well, this and that happened. Or why I got to pay for this. And, you know, when you, if you're working with me, 90% of the time, you don't financially commit anything because I'm responsible for funding the property. I pay for everything. You got your place and you got So I'm the last person that you're going to come to and talk to about the numbers changing because without me, this whole thing wouldn't even happen. So my Christmas present should be on point rather than you complaining. So when it comes, so when it comes to that, like, so through with the, like, we didn't, we didn't talk about that, but choosing your team wisely, oh my God, that's the, who. Man, man, man. Yeah, we, we, we will have to do a part two, man. Um, uh, we, we're coming up on the time. But listen, <laughs> amazing, always, always amazing. Bro, I, I was watching the show that we did. Actually, I think the third, I think it might have been the third show that we did. I said, man, look, if, 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 if he brings it half of the way that he did it in this one, this would go blow up too. But brother, mm-hmm. you always bring your A game. You always come with real stuff. Uh, I love what you do. I love what you're doing, man. I appreciate, uh, appreciate the, the education that you give to people um, and just, just sharing it openly, man. And I definitely appreciate that. So listen, don't be ashamed of whatever value, uh, what we'll, we'll say whatever price you put on the value that you offer for folks, because I second it. It's going to be worth every penny of the investment because of the value that comes with it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, dude, it's, 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 go- it's going to be crazy. Uh, what I want to Oh, I think now they I always try to leave with something that uh to kind of stick with people. And Absolutely. so one thing I've noticed for 2021 is mo- most people don't know is I'm I'm like I'm a sniper. That's why people you don't hear me talk that much and mm-hmm. you don't see you know people don't see me out as much but my my analysis and studying everything that's going on is is lethal. And I ran into uh, Tim the other day, uh, not Tim but Will he came up to the restaurant support. He was surprised that I, I hadn't talked to him almost all year. I knew everything that he had he had going on. Right. <laughs> and I, and I, I was like, yo, man, I'm proud to see you doing this. I see that. I see this. So what one thing that I'm noticing, and uh, I'm, I'm going to speak to us because I feel like that's the most important thing at a certain point. Mm-hmm. It's time for everybody that has been in the game for a while. It's time for you guys to stop being solopreneurs. And by saying solo, I don't care how much money you make. If you're not, if you don't employ people, you're missing the mark. And wow. we, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't get into that. But that was another reason why I chose to go this direction because now we don't, we as African Americans, and I'm going to be very straightforward, is that <clears throat> we don't have a major footprint, footprint in industry, in any industry except real, for spending. Real stuff. And it's time for you guys to stop you know, doing Instagram videos about this and this and that and blah, blah, blah. And it's time for you guys to step into an industry of your 
choice or above your liking. And it's time for you to, us to start employing our own. Right. Yeah. And everybody that's watching that comes with responsibility that comes with risk that I went from no employees 45 days ago to 15 employees. And one of those is an executive position. So yeah, do I feel, do I feel the stress every single month of making sure that people are things are payroll and everything my assistant is paid for? Yes, this is, this is real, but no, no other culture is going around and they're not opening up businesses, right? Mm -hmm. So we need businesses. We need people to step into industry. We need in the grocery industry. You know, one of the things that I, I saw and I thought <clears throat> that I don't ever want to be a hater. Right. But I want this is something that I feel like that is not thought, thought, thought through very strongly. I saw a ton of African-American entrepreneurs that are basically responsible for Target, Walmart and Kroger and all these other places about to record record sales because mm -hmm. of what they did. Mm -hmm. Look at who owns these companies and who they support. And what you just funded, mm. you know, you know what I'm talking about, Glenn. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I, I watched it, and I, I think the idea was good. But just think about if we were supporting our own in that particular industry, what, well, how different of a footprint it would have made. Real stuff. And when you, so when you, when you're able to identify what the real problems are in society. I'm taking the step out to make a difference. I'm only one person. I'm going to go as far as I can, but I'm going to be vocal about it. You know, I, I really feel like that it's time for us to step into industry and, you know, not just having a consulting program and you don't, you don't, you don't even employ two or three people like on a regular basis, not co commission is cool, but you step in where you have somebody that's working for you five days a week, you're responsible for salary because what that does not, but you understand that's, what's going to help you grow. Mm. Right. So we need to take for 2021 and nobody takes anything from what I say. We our footprint in, in, in the financial services industry is very small, which which it needs to be bigger there. So it means somebody is going to have to step up and take the test, get securities license, get insurance license, open up an office and go door by door in our communities and start educating our people on finances, not credit. Right. Because that's the biggest thing right now. Everybody feels like they're doing a big thing because that we're running these credit companies and all this other stuff. But let me tell you something. The only thing you're actually doing is you're correcting a mistake that was never you that, that they never learned from and you're putting them in a better position to go and get more consumer debt. That's not the way to do it. Wow. Wow. Right? Mind you, I'm watching. I see where the industry is going. We don't have any power without the ability to employ our own. Kurt, that that's what I'm talking about. So now like I'm, I'm out of the I'm out of the rat race. Like I, I have never said it publicly, but I said it on your show that I was going to be the first millionaire in my family, the first generation millionaire. I did it and I did it on my own. Now it's not about me anymore. Now it's time to go to that next step where I say, dude, we have to open up businesses. And I'm tired and I get tired of going doing all these events and nobody take it serious. It's not about real estate. It's not about wholesale. It's about getting yourself in a position to where you, you can employ your own kids. This is start there. Yes. <laughs> if you're an entrepreneur and you're on here, you're talking. And you can't even give your kids a job full time while they're going through kids, while they're going through school, doing your stuff virtually. Something's not clicking. Wow. wow. Right. You, you may say, oh, well, they don't want to do real estate, but you're going to go let them wait tables for somebody else while they're going through school. It doesn't make much sense. True story. Right. So now this is this is the real side. Like we're talking real life. So everybody <clears throat> that is doing something for 2021. Your plan should say, I need to open up a business where I can employ at least five people. Set, set that as a goal and watch, watch how your circumstances change. Why, my, that, mind you, I'm talking about, but watch what happens to you personally. Watch what happens to your finances. Watch not only that, but when you do it for the right purposes, watch what God will do. Hey, that's that's going to the top of the 2021 goals list. So that's 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 me for 2021. Once I realize that now, everything I do is dedicated 100 percent to that. Cause I'm good. I'm fine. Like you make you make more money, you buy more shit. 
that's reality. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> we, we make more money. I'm going to get another car. I'm going to get more houses. But at some point, you got to step back and say, am I doing all I can right. for right. these certain areas? Or am I just making posts saying, oh, we got to stick together? No. It's time for you guys to start opening up stuff. You guys own. If you, I mean, but in, in, in business footprint, you know how inexpensive it is to actually do it? You see, right. see like, I'm, I'm telling people this. My, my restaurant was cheaper than a rental property. Wow. Now the rental property will cash flow a thousand dollars a month. This thing after it's all said and done is gonna spit out eight to ten. That's after employing everybody. Real stuff. Real right? stuff. Right. So so my mind is changing. So now I, I walk in every day and I'm excited because I have, you know, I got my cashiers, I got my chefs. I don't call them cooks because they're chefs, right? I call I give chefs. My first month I gave everybody a raise. Where who else does that? <laughs> I we had we had only been open for we had only been open. We'd only been open for three weeks. I we I had an incredible month so far in December in real estate. Everybody got a raise. Real, real stuff. I'm, I, I'm so excited by being able to say that. Did, did the company was able to support it? But no, the the group is a unique group is as a whole. So if one side does good, everything else does good. Could I have had more Christmas money? Yeah, but no, I bless everybody else. Raises this, and I, I'm gonna go over the numbers later to see what people's Christmas bonuses are gonna be. Hey, right. Look, I, I think I'm gonna start. I'm gonna give me that application for the unique group now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in, in, inside the group, there's still there's still other gaps that we need. Like I, I personally won't do it, but lending is something that we need to bring into it and responsible lending. Yes, right. So lend that that's something that we have to. But like I said, that's where there's gonna be so many moving parts. But just stopping there. But <clears throat> 2021, everybody that heard me. That's doing one thing. I think if you just say it, just the people you know opened up something that they're, they're, everybody's passionate about something else besides real estate, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. you you get in real estate and real estate is good because it makes money. But then what happens when it doesn't make money? Is is that passion still there, or, or are you going to start doing forex? Right, right, right. And that's that's so, not what happens. <laughs> yeah, and that that's that's what's going to happen. But everybody has something that they're good at. Um, you know, they're former athletes. Why why don't you have a basketball camp or why aren't you investing in somebody to have a year round basketball training program? So everybody that does everything during football, it needs to be invested into this. My uh, cousin that uh, that, you know, one of our you know stories as a family, he got drafted to the Lions. And right before he signed his contract in practice, he, poured, he uh, pulled his ACL. Wow. <clears throat> right. Wow. And and, you know, the whole family was looking at him to be the one. But then after I sat down and talked to him. This was uh, like a year ago, and I said, "Cause I was like, well, everybody knows you from this." I said, "Why? Why?" Don't, I was like, "Why don't you have your uh, like, why don't you have a program in place where you're teaching the kids to do this and this and that?" And in less than two, in less than two months, he had it up and running. It's just a little conversation from that. Now he's giving wisdom and experience to the kids that are in high school and uh, middle school and uh, getting ready, getting them prepared for what it's gonna be like to be in the big league, right? So now that's a whole nother business. And I hope he grows it out. But everybody that's watching, dude. You have something inside of you to teach. Make it a business. And don't make it a business that you do from your house. We're, we're getting way too comfortable being at home and everything. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 from, and from an economic standpoint, people don't understand that you're, we're, we're fueling or we're speeding up the process for AI to take over. We're doing it every day. Wow. Wow. Because we, because we want to do everything at home, we don't want to employ people. We don't want to take the real risk, right? Of making of trying to build out an industry. But I tell you who I tell you who ain't doing that. Amazon, right? I tell I tell you who else ain't doing that. My these people, they're still that mind. They may be making adjustments, but <clears throat> think in business. Just imagine this: everybody based real estate decision off of what major companies to come into town. Uh, absolutely, Walmart. Yeah. One day, uh, Home Depot. <laughs> yeah, one one day I strive to be one of those companies that people want to work for, and a company that's coming in town for their headquarters to change an economy in the surrounding city. Real stuff. Real give stuff. Let's, hey, let's give let's give it a shot. What's the worst that can happen? Right. <laughs> hey, look, I, I sit on that board. <laughs> there you go. And I think, and collectively, we have every, we have everything we need to do it as a group. But well, like I say, I say, I say everything for a reason that until people change this first level, you'll never break down that barrier of stepping out and saying, hey, 
let me bring this to the marketplace because now there's a conglomerate of entrepreneurs that run a company that the world has never seen before. And that's that's what we have the ability to do. Because mind you, I don't care what, if nobody really, people don't pay attention to how powerful our money is. Yeah. If our money is directed where it's supposed to be, but the only way we can do that is if we own in this industry. Why, why do you think I keep talking about, and I know we're 20 minutes over, but <clears throat> why do you think that I keep talking about the financial services industry? Because all of black wealth is in Wall Street with non-black companies. Your mm -hmm. retirements, your IRAs, your 401ks, you have no idea where it's invested. It's with Smith Barney, it's with Dean Weir. Who, what are the other companies? Um, Ernest & Young. What's mm -hmm. all these other companies uh, are directing the black, but how many black owned financial firms are in charge of our money? Because big developers come to these firms to get money to build these places that you can't live. Wow. See, if you if you really understand, you would want to make a change. We we we're gonna, we're gonna have to definitely do that. Part that two man, and three. Yeah, this, 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 <laughs> that's the money game is gonna change change the game this time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and mind you, my most people know my cold went away for about thirty minutes when I got fired up. <laughs> it, it got it got too hot inside of here. It's like man, we. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I think I think my start going away a little bit too. <laughs> it's hot. No, man, but like, I I appreciate this show, you know, for the platform and I whatever I can do to um anybody. Why I'm why I'm on this? Anybody that has any type of connections with uh, Tyler Perry Studios or anything like that, I personally would invest so that this platform become something that's heard around the country for us. And and I right. would and mind you, first thing I said was to go to his studio. Right. Not nobody else, not the library, his studio, because if he heard what our mission was, he would jump right behind it and then also have other ideas on how to get out there and do it. Like wow. this platform itself, not even not with me at the head of it. I don't want to I don't have to, I don't need to, but just this mess is getting out there and it, it going viral. And it being on every single thing because there's no real platforms out there talking about this. Real stuff, real stuff. So that's an hey, that's an idea. My brother, listen, we definitely gonna have a conversation about that. Uh, about what we were talking about earlier about the uh, the other podcast that we're working on. Yeah. Uh, you, you listen. I, I think you might have seated yourself as a co-host if we can get you to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I just I like I said, I just I appreciate what you do and what a couple of other people do. And I just feel like, you know, the only time I can speak, I have to speak, I, I, I don't like to speak about, actually, I don't think I talked about any glamour. Everything, had, I, I feel like my, I, I, I need to be Dark Vader and say, yo, this is what you gotta prepare for. But through that, the light is beautiful. Like, you know, I leave, I leave and, um, and I, don't hear, I don't hear a lot of you know, people making money, they don't talk like this. I leave on Monday, I'm not coming back till February, I'm out. <laughs> right, I'm um, not look, no week, a month gone. Right. Cash flow, business up. running, all this. I'm out. God, I paid the price. I did what needed to be done. A month, I'm gone. I won't even be here. My phone is going off. Don't call me. Don't send me messages. <laughs> but hey, listen, you are yeah. booked for March. Don't forget you. Yeah, no, I'll be. I'll be here. <laughs> but, but, but I'm co I'm going into like a like a deep meditation, and I'm gonna come for coming back. I already have it, but we just got it out in stone what what the what the uh, focus is gonna be for 2021. And when we come back, just like I did last year, and it's just it's a hundred percent full. Like there's nothing outside of that plan that can even come into the circle. So you know, I'm ready. I'm excited. I'm I'm you know excited for everybody that's had you know big things happen for them this year. I've been watching, seeing some people that I know that are really growing, and it's exciting to see. So. But it's, now it's time to take it to that next step, and it's time for us to really start looking into the marketplace for business and us, and really set up a footprint. Tell tell the folks about how they can come to support you at the at the at the <laughs> hot dog factory. How they can support you? <laughs> so we are so we are. I'm at the uh, the original hot dog factory located in South Lake Mall uh, in Amaro. Um, I think it's 1100 South Lake Parkway, but you just type in South Lake Mall. Um, um, uh, South Lake Mall Food Court, and uh, we're open. We're the we're the newest restaurant. We're the only black-owned restaurant in the in the uh, in the entire food court. 
Uh, we have we have the only fresh food, you know, fresh made restaurant. So everything else around is scoop and serve. You come to us, you're, you're getting real food seasoned by real people, and you know you're getting a smiling face that looks like yours at the counter, which is something that I that I enjoy. So and, you know, every, just come by. You guys order any issues or whatever, call me. You know, we'll, we'll rectify. But if the response has been great down there, man. You know, outside of the support from everybody. Um, you know, in the circle, but it's it's been it's been phenomenal, man. Hey, listen, I I got some of my folks uh, coming in from out of town. We come, we gonna come check you out on Saturday, man. Oh yeah, um, yeah, I'll definitely. Yeah, Saturday's gonna be a long day. Yeah, we'll definitely be there. I'm, I'm gonna have to get there early this time. I got there last time, but then the lights went out of the food court. Oh, <laughs> that's right. You were for the grand opening. Oh, hey, that, yeah, that was, yeah, that was that was insane. Yeah, yeah, that's but we're we're down there. Um, we have uh, for twenty, we're still narrowing it down, but. We have, uh, and next time that we do this, I, I would like to try to have Dennis on the show with me, which he's the guy, he's the owner of, okay. of, the, of the corporation. And what's, what's major and what made me jump behind his movement is that he has one of the only black-owned franchises that I know. Like, it's 100% his. And he's nice. pushing he's pushing black ownership in a manner that I've never seen before. Like, he's coming in and saying, like, literally having people leave corporate jobs open up a hot dog restaurant so that they can start building. So we, we have the same, you know, mindset. So like you said, you, you, you're aligning yourself with people that have the same goal. So that that's why they, there's no ego. I, I've been in the industry way longer than him. I ain't trying to tell him nothing. I said, hey, boss, where you want me to go? He's like, I think you should take South Lake Mall. I was like, I don't even know where South Lake Mall is, but I'm going. On my way. <laughs> yeah, right? I did. And, and that's how it happened because I had that much respect for him. And I said, hey, you know what? Let's, let's do it. So, you know, him being that, but then not only that, but he owns two other uh, concepts that, that are under that same umbrella, which I'm ta- I'm going to take a, uh, I'm going to take, um, you know, ownership of each one of those, you know, the, uh, the crew hookah lounges, which is going to be the next thing. The next one that they're actually in the process of already working on. So now you have a place where you can come eat. Now we have the places. Now I'm going to have a venue where we can host our own shows, where we can host our own, uh, our own real estate meetups and also, and, you know, just being, you know, like being able to do that, saying that. We're going to the places that we own because we always patr- we always become patrons at, at, at a place. Why not be the people that own it? Say, hey, you know what? You guys are having a flipology over here. Once you guys have your after party at Crew Lounge, I'll shut down the whole place for you guys and stuff like that. So that's that's where our minds, that's where my mindset is. I'm saying wherever we go, I, at some we have to have some interest in ownership. Now, I don't even want to say interest. We need to own it. Why not? You know, most of these businesses, are cheaper than the cars that we buy. Right, right. Look, this, this, this is real deal stuff. The number, the number that you know we negotiated for one of the other companies is less than the, than, than the damn exotic car that I bought. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's so when when now that I'm understanding this in business, it's more so that it's not that we can't afford it. It's just that it's not a focus of us. Definitely, definitely. You know what I mean? So you know, so I'll I'll end out on that. But yes, yeah, so, uh, original hot dog factory, South Lake Mall. If you guys can't make it to my location, we are in uh, in Discovery Mills Mall, which is Sugarloaf Mall now. Uh, perimeter, uh, the perimeter location uh, just opened. Carla Mall, I think it's set to open next month. Marietta Square and the original location in Smyrna on Spring Road. And there's one downtown that is the sit-down restaurant that serves alcohol. So we're, we're growing rapidly and don't just support my store, support everybody's store because if they look good, I look good. If I look good, they look good. Real stuff, real stuff. <clears throat> All right, my brother, listen, thank you again for coming on and always dropping gems. My pleasure, uh, man. You definitely gonna have to do this again. Uh, if I can catch you before you go on your, your exercise, <laughs> great. If not, I'll just get with you when you get back. We got, I got inner, listen, I got in, and I, I, yo, I'm gonna be so relaxed. <laughs> and, like, and just like you know, you like you. I actually, I actually, if you want to, I prefer to, to do a show over there, so okay. that I, so that I can give you like, and I'll probably be able to do it like right in front of the pool, so everybody can see. And I want to give people just kind of an idea of basically what we talked about here, but then what that what the end what the end product looks like. Done and done. You know, we'll definitely done. Like that. I'm per- I'm perfectly fine with that. Go ahead, give you some rest, man. Uh, I'm gonna catch up with you this weekend, definitely for awesome. sure. Uh, again, thank you again. Thank you for educating the people. But I'm gonna take a selfish, some more selfish approach. Thank you for always educating me, brother. Always inspiring me. Um, always, always encouraging me to grow, man. And I thank you for all you do. I appreciate it. No, and and, and likewise, man. I appreciate like you've been, you've been doing this for, whoo, 
I, I think the first time me and you did this, we were in my flip. It was 2017 on Peach Crest Court. <laughs> so you, so you, you've been like just like Tyler Perry. You've been persistent, self production. I've seen it, people. Like he, he sets it up himself. So, Definitely. You see, so, you I, <laughs> so I, I'm going to do everything that I can to make sure that this gets pushed to a higher platform. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's that, that's going to be a goal of mine for next year. So, yeah, but no, man, in, anytime, anything, anybody, everybody that's uh, online, you know, if you inbox me, I'm always, on, I'm always, my social media alerts are always open. So oh, yeah, tell me how to reach out to you. Oh, I'm, so I'm on uh, Facebook uh, under uh, my uh, full name, Robert Duvel Yancey. It's R-O-B-E-R-T. Middle name is D A L E and um last name is Yancy Y A N C Y. That's on Facebook. And then on Instagram is Mr. Underscore Invest ATL. And uh you you can find me on any one any one of those platforms. Great <clears> stuff. <throat> Great stuff. All right, brother. Thanks again, man. We will check you out. My uh, I will definitely again and give you my word. I'm gonna come see you on Saturday and uh till we till we meet again. All right. Uh, in the Real Life Real Estate Investing Show, where we talk about real life real estate situations, where we bring you real life real estate solutions. And uh, thank y'all for watching. Look forward to seeing you real soon. Boom. See you guys.